I'm Chief Robert Burby of the Texas City Police Department. Here today is Mr. Jack Brody, from Galveston County District Attorney. He's here today to better uh, to assist us in providing information in the open carry a law that's going to take place in January of 2016. Thank you, Chief. I'm glad to join you today. Um, folks are going to have a lot of questions about the new open carry law but hopefully this time will give us a chance to prep them on some of the issues and, and maybe address some things they have on their mind. What I have for you today are a couple of questions that we have gathered from the citizens and I think this will be a good start, a good time to answer some of those questions uh, which have been asked of us uh, regarding the open carry law that's going to take uh, effect January the 1st, 2016. What are the major changes to the current concealed carry law? Well, the, the new law is going to be the open carry law, and that's going to come into effect January 1st, 2016. Uh, essentially, it's going to maintain all of the privileges and regulations that folks who have a concealed carry license have, and it's just going to translate into an open carry license. And so uh, before, where someone had to carry a weapon concealed, now they will be able to either carry it concealed or carry it openly as long as they're carrying it in a shoulder holster or a belt holster. And there are some other restrictions that we'll probably talk about in a little bit, but essentially those, that's the big difference. What are the new licensing requirements that are going to take place? Some folks have asked whether they, if they already have a concealed license, do they have to go get a new license? And if someone already has a valid concealed carry license, then that license will translate right into the new open carry law. Uh, it will be now referred to as a license to carry, but they won't have to get a new license and, until that license becomes due to renew, uh, and they won't have to have any additional training. Now, for people who don't already have a concealed carry license, they'll apply to get a license. It'll be called a license to carry, and it will include some additional training on the open carry laws uh, that come into effect. What are the places where weapons are always prohibited? That's a good question. There, folks are concerned about where they can carry concealed and open, but it's important to keep in mind that there are some places where weapons are always going to be prohibited. Uh, for example, in schools, uh, public schools, K through 12 private schools, you cannot carry inside the school buildings, uh, no matter what kind of license you've got. Um, polling places on election day, another place where you cannot carry a weapon. Um, in courtrooms and... Um, Commission of meetings? The w government meetings, uh, the, the law has talked about government meetings and government buildings, and it specifically addresses the issue of open meetings. Um, it, it's an interesting part of this law. The law has been designed to allow citizens to carry inside government buildings except in very specific situations. One is where there is a court room. The other is where there is an open government meeting. Now, it will be important that the government posts signs for that, but if the, if the government has posted that open meeting, then the license holder cannot carry uh, inside that meeting room. How will schools be effective like public schools and many colleges? Well, public schools K through 12, uh, folks cannot carry inside the school buildings. Uh, concealed carry and licensed open carry would be allowed on the property outside of the school, like the parking lots and the, the sidewalks and driveways, things like that. Now, for colleges, it's a different story. Uh, there, people are talking about campus carry. Uh, campus carry comes into effect on August 1st of 2016. Now, it's important to remember, there will not be any open carry on college campuses. So the kind of carry we're going to be talking about is always going to be concealed carry. So on college campuses, that becomes effective on August 1st, 2016. And each college is going to be responsible for adopting the policies that regulate when and where uh, folks and students in particular can carry on those campuses. For junior colleges, the law becomes effective August 1st of 2017. 
And again, if, if people have questions about a particular school or university, then they should contact the administration of that school to determine what the policies are. What about government uh, facilities? The, the law's been drafted so that citizens who have a license to carry, either concealed or openly, will have access to government properties and facilities and be able to lawfully carry inside those facilities. A couple of restrictions there. Uh, one is courtrooms and the rooms that service the courts. Uh, you, you may not carry open or concealed in those areas. The second area is where there are open government meetings taking place. Uh, citizens, even if they have a license, cannot carry in those rooms. Now those rooms, of course, will have to be, uh, have the appropriate signs in place to advise citizens when there is an open, an open meeting going on. If I'm a citizen, not a police officer, what would I do if I see someone carrying a gun? And that's a concern that a lot of people have. Uh, after January 1st, uh, some license holders are going to be carrying openly. And so how do citizens react? Well, uh, the important thing is to always stay calm. Uh, it's important that we keep in mind that the law is going to change. And so after January 1st, it's going to become more commonplace to see people carrying firearms openly. So uh, if, if that's the only thing that's out of the norm, uh, don't become alarmed. You can always call your police department chief. They'll call your office. And I, I'm sure you'll have the number available for them if they have a concern. I know the police department is always going to be ready to respond. But unless there is something else out of the ordinary there, it's important that people remember that, that license holders are going to be able to carry openly so it's not an immediate cause to become alarmed. Right. I just want everyone to know uh, that, you know, January 1st, uh, 2016, there will be seeing a lot of uh, open carry. Uh, in, in and around uh, the cities and through the, throughout the state. And again, uh, we have certain provisions that, um, that we have to meet before we can go up and uh, demand to see the con uh, concealed carry permit. So uh, again, I want the citizens to bear with us, all, not just with us, all law enforcement, to know that just because someone is carrying a gun exposed doesn't mean that they're breaking any laws. So I know it's going to be hard for a lot of folks to take because it is a difference. It's a, it's a shift in what you're used to. But I believe that if we just take our time and, and understand and, uh, that, that it's their right, it is the law. And uh, we're here to enforce the law and uh, abide by it as well. And uh, just be patient with us and uh, uh, report anything you think is suspicious and make sure you be very specific and uh, what you tell dispatchers uh, or any police uh, agency or uh, responding uh, police uh, officer that you want to uh, alert that someone is carrying a uh, firearm. So we ask for your cooperation, we ask for your patience, and we ask that uh, everyone understand that um, it's gonna, this is the law now and it's, it's, it's not going to go away. A couple of concerns uh, and questions I have what are the risks of the offense of trespassing? Gotcha. Uh, so government's going to have to put up signs if they want to restrict people who have a, a license to carry concealed or a license to carry openly. Um, and it's also important to note that private business owners have an absolute right to regulate whether somebody comes on their property with a concealed weapon or an open carry weapon. The, the statutes that control this are section 30.06 and 30.07 of the Texas Penal Code. And 30.06 deals with concealed carry licenses and 30.07 deals with open carry licenses. And those two statutes set out very strict requirements about what the sign should say and the wording has to be exact and what the sign should look like. So I would refer citizens to that rather than go through that long list. Um, it's important for property owners to know, business owners to know, that they can choose to allow someone to carry concealed but not allow people to carry openly, or they could let somebody carry openly but not concealed or both, or neither. It's entirely up to the property owner to decide. They just have to provide the proper notice. Uh, a property owner can also always give oral notice to somebody who's, who's on their business 
and they can tell them, I'm sorry, you're not allowed to carry concealed or openly here, so I'm going to have to ask you to leave. And then the citizen does have to exit the private business at that point. State law requires that those signs be in English and also in Spanish. In English and Spanish, right. And the um, various agencies are going to have examples for folks to use. I think you can actually order signs from the Department of Public Safety website. So anybody who, who has that question can Google that information. Uh, just check the source of the, the website that you're getting the information from. Make sure it's that it's a, a legitimate state agency. I want to thank you uh, for coming over today. I know there will be a lot of questions that uh, we have uh, covered today, and it will uh, also come up. We'll be working with your office uh, in the coming uh, days, as well as the general public, uh, to answer these concerns. Uh, there will be a uh, town hall meeting held in Texas City, uh, which is going to be posted on this uh, uh, video, and the times and place uh, as well. Uh, this, this town hall meeting will be uh, a, a good information source uh, for citizens to come and ask questions and also hear the information we have to provide. Again, we really appreciate you coming over and talking with us today uh, regarding this issue. I know there's going to be a lot of changes right off the bat uh, starting in January, but together we'll work through it. Yes, sir. And, and I think the idea of you hosting a town hall is great. It'll give us a chance to answer as many questions as we can. Um, you know, and it's going to be just important, too, for people to remember that the law is changing, and it takes a while to adjust to that change, but we'll get through it. Uh, I, I know that your office and my office will work closely together to make sure that everything is being done properly. And um, I don't think it's anything for citizens to worry about. I think it'll work out. There are other states around the country to have this law, and I haven't heard anything significant uh, from those states. And this is Texas, and I am sure uh, we will be leading a pack. Again, I want to uh, thank Mr. Jack Rohde, the Gasson County DA, for coming over and talking with us today. Uh, we look forward in uh, next year coming, uh, the new year, and the new laws, and uh, hopefully information we provide today will assist us in uh, being better prepared. Thank you very much. Bro. Chief, thank you very much. Okay. Pleasure.